What I would say is that given the weight difference between us and the size difference, if you decided to come at me, now I've touched hands with you. And now that we've been face to face. I'm not particularly scared. Yeah. It's, I think that I could uh, get away. If I'm there and I gotta put you away, I won't like it. Basically, um, yeah. with, with the skills that I have. I've seen your videos and seen your MMA fights. It's that wicked, like, right head kick. Right? I'm not quite sure how I'd deal with that. So that's <laughs> dangerous. But if you, you know, suddenly took some, you know, like went off your head and decided to come in, I'm not overly 100% worried. Brother, you are going down. I no, think no, I could. I think I would destroy you. There's a flip side to that coin. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I think you'd last about five seconds before I had you on the ground in control and I smashed your head in. That's that's the difference. What if you do got me boxed in and I got to put you down? Because no matter what, you will not get in my way. Hello, welcome to In Defense to Traditional Martial Arts. Saturday before last, I met up with this Wing Chun guy. Uh, we've been having a backward and forward on a fire gym project on Facebook. We were arguing about whether you, or not you can use gloves. His argument is that Wing Chun needs a burr fist for their punches to be able to be used effectively. My argument is if two people are both wearing gloves, they're both at the same disadvantage. The argument went as far as it could online. He offered to come meet me. As you can see, things got a bit heated at times. What, what's that? What? What do you mean you can do it better? Okay, hold on. Hello! In defense of the traditional martial arts, last weekend I went to meet up with this geezer who studies wind chuck. He was showing me a demonstration. But I mean, there's all sorts of other things that don't work with gloves. It's like, I mean, there's, there's like arm control. There's things like that. Once we'd sort of talked a little bit more, he started saying that he reckons he wouldn't have been scared of uh, me, you know, in a fight. Uh, and I was like, son, <laughs> you would be, because my ding dong is well bigger than yours. Really? Yeah. yeah <laughs> if mm. I'm here. Yeah. It's a single whip. And he was like, sunshine, I'm telling you, my dingling is bigger than yours. Not this, not quite the same guard, actually. No. Well, actually, no. This I'm, I'm just showing you now for for, oh, uh, for the for the. This is um this is this is mantis. It's it's, yeah. it's like that. It's... And I said, you've got some audacity, cause my ding dong is well bigger than yours. So not... you, you're still going to do that, with right. you? Yeah. Love. And then he said. I don't think so. My ding dong is well bigger than yours. But you got to you got to take my arm with it. So I had a really good comeback, and I just went, I don't think so. My dingling is bigger than yours. Oh yeah, but I mean, again, mm. we're back to sparring. So if you do that with me, you got to mm. take my hand. You're not going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but again, yeah. again we're back yeah. to sparring. And basically, that's what my, uh, my last uh, little short, uh, you know, summed up here. Do you feel happy now you got that off your chest? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I think that's what everybody else sees. Well, you don't seem to, but yeah, that's what everyone else sees. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> As I said, as you can see, things got a little bit heated at times. Ding dong! <laughs> but just for clarification... You've got the biggest dong? <laughs> for clarification, I've heavily edited down this interaction because both of us went off on unneeded tangents. We were arguing about stuff unrelated Ding dong. to the original argument. I've tried to reel it back in towards the argument about gloves versus not having gloves. 
hopefully this is interesting if anyone wants to see the whole thing unedited maybe I'll release the whole thing let me know in the comment section also I've got the biggest ding dong <laughs> so today I'm joined by Jim um, Wing Chun, uh, Wang Kam Lung School, Practical Wing Chun, out of um, under Sifu Ben Oy in, in Amsterdam. So it's um, non traditional Wing Chun with a bit of Yi Tran um, and some of my own elements kind of thrown in, All right. basically. So we got talking on the Far Jin Project. It was Far Jin, was it Far Jin? Yeah, or yeah. It, yeah, it was Far Jin Project on Facebook where we, we had a disagreement about, I think, you can use gloves for these kinds of punches. Jim thinks you can't. He's going to explain why that is, give some demonstrations. Well, basically, it's, it's mechanics. Um, <clears throat> if you look at boxing and glove fighting, it's, it's long punches. It's, it's big, long, circular movements, which is basically a transfer of momentum, and you're trying to knock the other person's brain loose in their head. Um, a short punch is not swung. It basically, it comes off the floor and it comes through the frame. And the point of contact is essential. You're basically, you're sending force from your elbow through into your small knuckles <clears throat> and basically poking the other person pretty much as if you were kind of like prodding them with a, the, sh the blunt end of a, a broomstick. Um, if you've got a glove on, A, you have the padding, which basically cushions that force. It separates your ribs from my knuckles. And also, it spreads the force out over a larger force. So if I hit you with a glove on, I might wind you. If I hit you without gloves on, I'm basically going to crush the muscles against the bone. And I can throw a lot of them because they're very short without having to wind up to throw a long punch. So it's a different style of punching. There is long punching in Wing Chun, but um, the short punching, which is the trademark of all the Southern arts, like Back May, um, Dragon's Gate, um, White Crane and Wing Chun, they all specialise in this, in this short power generation. It's like for fighting in, in streets, it's for fighting below decks on boats where you can't maybe not see the other person and you haven't got space to make a big swing. So it's basically, it's a different way of fighting. Yeah, uh, so the reason we disagreed is because I've shown footage of boxers who are fighting from this uh, mm -hmm. range and they're knocking people out. So. For me, I personally don't think gloves, because both people are wearing gloves, I think it's a, you cancelling each other out, basically. Well, that's a different thing. If, if you've got both people operating by the same rules, yeah. but only one of them is familiar with that style of punching, it's not, it's not equal. If you train, like doing big punches like this, and then, and I train, uh, train doing short punches like this, and then we put both gloves on, and then we both punch like this. You've got an advantage because you've trained that. But I'm not saying that Wing Chun people should do this. What I'm saying is, so, big long punches. So you're saying if you take the gloves off, yeah. Wing Chun's got the advantage because you've got no gloves. Yeah. But if I'm long punching, I mm. now don't have the padding. I now have the focus into certain knuckles. I have the ability to crush bone into muscle with my long punches. Yeah, but you, it still works with the gloves on. It works with and without the gloves on. The short punch, I mean, you can get something out of it at all, but I reckon you'd lose about 50% of the power um, if, you, if you short punch with gloves on. Because the idea of a short punch is to basically, it's like shocking power. They call it gengin. It's kind of like, bang, I'm, I'm going to shock you, get a, get a flinch and then move to do something else. It's, if I just kind of like, and it's cushioned, you're just gonna go, well, what? Yeah, I basically, I've gotta make you jump, basically. I've gotta make you flinch. Yeah. So, again, uh, uh, my argument against this kind of, you know, like, cause you've said the knuckles, you know, it, it creates more pain. I believe when you're in 
an actual physical confrontation, that extra pain. If I go like this with my knuckles, then I get a glove out and whack you with the glove. Obviously, mm. the knuckle's going to hurt more. When you've got your adrenaline pumping, when you're physically like, I need to defend myself against this violent confrontation, mm -hmm. I believe that extra pain of the knuckles isn't going to matter. It's, it's like in jiu-jitsu where they do the guard opening and you get people dig their elbows into the inner fights. You know, when you're training, you go, oh, you bastard. But in a competition, someone does that, you kind of laugh at them because the adrenaline's throw it flowing and you're just not in that same it's, mindset. I agree with you. And I know this in jiu-jitsu, they, they teach that don't people not to rely on pain for submissions because some people just like don't give a shit yeah. um, it's not the same idea it is more painful um, and you might not give a shit but it's going to provoke a response and also there's there's, there's kind of striking to the arms as well so Which if you again happens with boxing it's not it's not as prevalent it's not the same if I catch you with with this part of my arm here and if you're bringing coming in to punch me and i basically hit you like that if i'm doing that with a glove a this is all bound up yeah. and b i'm hitting you with the boxing but glove. we're, we're no longer up. talking about punching there we're talking about other strikes and if we then get into mma you have got mm. this you've got your elbows you've got which knees, is my point is why mma doesn't use more short techniques i is a mystery to me. I think they should because they basically they long punch, and then as soon as they get to here, they start grappling, which is logical. I don't think that's true. Though, if we look at Diaz brothers, if we look at like um, Anderson Silva, he you Wing get Chun. very short punches. Anderson Silva, the Wing Chun guy. He did Wing Chun towards the end of his career. He was doing short mm. range punching from mm. the beginning of his career. It's, well, I'm, we, it's, it's, you know, I, I'm not saying Wing Chun is useless. Far from it. I love Wing Chun. I've always had a soft spot for it. Bruce Lee fan. Uh, but I am saying, I think these kind of techniques do happen in them, aren't they? And they happen with gloves on. And they, I don't think, I think if two people are wearing gloves. Anyway, <laughs> instead of just talking it over, we've, We've done this online endlessly. Let's get a pad and have a bit of a demonstration. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be punching you from here rather than a boxer. If a boxer's going to hit you here, he's going to bum, he's going to well, wind you've, in you've like you've that. You took a step back though. No, I know, I was giving you a. boxer is going to. So yeah. this happens in boxing. Yeah, that's They kind don't of do like... this and they don't do that. They yeah. do this. Yeah, that's kind which of. Which is short range. Yeah, punching. it's going to the physics of it later yeah. but I mean the, the idea is 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 that I just like literally from here without crouching without flipping it's but again I would argue that that is the same range of motion that boxers use well if you want to if you want to try it with a glove yeah so if we put a glove on yeah. right so we'll just explain what you just said off camera um I don't think he's going to feel that much difference because the actual net force is going to be the same. It's not the point of the same as the point of contact having because we punch with these knuckles. Yeah. Two knuckles. So instead of I you being three knuckles. I go two. Well yeah. I guess yeah. It does. yeah but it's so that so you got you've got you've got that much space yeah. of bone against now this much space. So are you pack. saying I will feel less or the same? You feel the same force because the same force yeah. is coming through but it's not well, in fact, it's not hitting your bones. Yeah. It's not yeah. hitting your hitting your bones. I'm going to have to give you a body shot. Right. So if we, oh, well, we'll, we'll do we'll do the body shot with the glove first. Okay. Right. So so, so if I go for a a body shot with this. Yes. Yeah. It's not doing anything. All right. So then we take the glove off. Yeah. So here we go. Right. Where do you want it? There? Yeah. A little bit lower because that's just where I've had a, a broken rib yeah. in the past. <laughs> okay, and then. Can you feel the difference? Well, I can feel the difference, but again, like, if I'm in a fight, I really don't. I'm think... not trying to knock you out with that, though. I know you're not trying to knock me out, but what I'm saying is, 
if you did that with a glove or you did that with a fist, I'm not reacting any different, in my opinion. Like, I know you say you're not trying to knock me out, and this would be different if you're going full force and you're really meaning it, and I can feel the difference, but I still maintain, if we were fighting for real, and you had no gloves on, or you had a glove on, it would get the same reaction from me. The, the difference is, is if, say, I manage to flank you and I get to here, I can punch yeah. you from here. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, so... Yeah. Again, yeah. but this is... So this I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can hit you yeah. here, and I can hit you here. Yeah. And that took your feet. And then off, I'm off around the side, and then well, bang, I've got you. So but those if, are, if the punches in, are to, to get responses, basically. If, if we get into this, it racks you, right? So I can hit you here. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if we do this, we're going to have to spar. If yeah. You stop. Yeah, I know. Because I could put my hands in the way of you. Yeah. And then we're sparring. So yeah. if you leave your hands, so I can do this, and this sets up this. It's the same amount of space. You've, you've still got to get your hand to here. You've still got to get your hand to here, just as I've got to get my hand to here. Mm, yeah, but I can get my hand from here to but here. Yeah, to I mean, get to me. That's that's what we were discussing yeah. earlier. The so I've got an experiment that I've been thinking about for this, right? I want you to yeah. stop this jab. I'm gonna. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm gonna put the jab there. I'm not gonna go yeah. any further than that. I want you to stop this jab. All right. Mm. All right. I want you to stop this. Mm. How much easier is it to stop someone? that's not trying to hit you. Um, well, it's a lot easier, yeah. Yeah. So you've got to get from this distance, yeah. you've got to get to here yeah. to set this up. Um, yeah. If I want to punch you, yeah. I've got to get from here to punch you. Yeah. And even there, you've missed, and then I'm coming through with that punch. So I don't see the difference that's that's what I'm getting at you've still got when we get this when people say I can punch from contact that's great you've got to get to here so if I'm outside of this range yeah I've got to close in now if we're here and we're in contact yeah you've still got to punch me yeah but we're now in a live situation where we're into chi cell um yeah and then from there if I'm a long range fighter yeah I'm stepping back and which point and I follow you. In, yeah, and then we're into... At which point I follow you. Yeah, so it's balanced. Yeah, so what I want to do is you, your long fist, you want to fight from here and you're fighting for angles and you're but fighting when you talk for about here. Long fist, you've still got close range punch. So we're back to where I say boxers can punch from this distance. Yeah, you've got where these shovel hooks. And, and where, but it's not shoveling because you're here. A mm. good boxer upcuts... It's coming from the same mechanics as doing that. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, um, it's, I never want, it, when the fight starts, we're kind of, we're kind of at this distance here. Yeah. When the fight breaks out, right, however, however I get in, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to follow you. I'm yeah. going to walk you yeah, down. And I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, right, and I might take one on the way in. Yeah, but, but at some point you're going to run out of space. But I'm not. I'm going to walk I, you. I haven't gone off the camera phone. Yeah, but and I can do this all day. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're now clinched. Yeah. So how are you going to get the punches off? And now we're here. Yeah. So this idea that you can fight from here. Doesn't it's got, wash with me. It's what Bruce Lee called fighting in a phone box. Yeah, but Bruce Lee never fought. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Lee's complaint was that he was fighting in a phone box, and he basically he made your point yeah. that, you know, what do you do when the people are further out? So that's when he started introducing the, the kicks yeah. and the longer punches as well. But um, in a ring, you can't run away forever. You kind of get penalised. Yeah, well, you don't if you're hitting. Yes. If I'm going back and I'm hitting, people can do this, and it does happen. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to test this without anybody getting hurt. 
Because um, my, my argument is against how often Wing Chun people train at this range yeah. is that they pretty much don't know how to enter into it and they don't very much know how to deal when people close past that. Well, that, as I say, if you get past that, we didn't do it. If you get past that, that becomes elbows and knees and shoulder and shoulder barges, which are, people don't get that far. Well, um, that's like the third form. And the second form is precisely, is, is bridging. If the other person's not running away. Yeah, but um, we don't see it in actuality. And that's, that's my point. Well, as I, I say, there's a lot of bad people out there. <laughs> there's a lot of bad teachers out there. Um, but it is mainly, it's, um, it is mainly um, a counter-attacking style. Um, and there's not really, I can only think of one, kind of like aggression, if I want to pick a fight with you. Yeah. And you're kind of like, no, 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 I don't want to fight. For me to start a fight with you without you wanting to, we don't have really many moves like that. It's a question of when you want to fight with me, that's when we have the move. So it's when you're coming at me, but again, when, when I see footage of Wing Chun fighters fighting, if they get pressured, there's very little footage I've seen where a Wing Chun fighter will maintain this close well, not distance that you are talking about. They will want to back off because they don't like being hit. And when it closes, and I've, I've spoken to a lot of, not a lot, that's a lie. I've spoken to a couple of Wing Chun teachers that will say they find the bad side of Wing Chun to be this three, four different movements from this Chi Sao position when in actual combat situation you're going to get that, you know, it's going to be a, a second. <laughs> that's Wing Chun. Eh? That's Wing Chun. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, 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 that's, that's the kind of, you're going to get, a, a, but a lot of Wing Chun people get then get into this where they're doing nine attempts. There is, a, there is, there is, there is a, a thing um, that people are warned against. Is, is if you train chi sao, basically you're training. Kind of, if you put pressure into me, if you kind of like just put your arm into me, I'm basically feeling your pressure and feeling where yeah. you're going. And then when you move, we go yeah. like this, and we feel where they move. In a fight, you don't do that. You kind you of like do that. no. You yeah. in a fight, you say, okay, there's his pressure. Whoop, boom, right, yeah. and I and I've got him. And what people do is they call it chasing the arm. So we're, we're arm on arm, right? And, you're doing yeah. this, and you start trying to hit me, and I start, I'm still chasing yeah. your arms. When I shouldn't be chasing your arms, I should be, be trying hit. to hit you. Yeah. Um, Which, interestingly enough, is the point I've made about pushing hands with Tai Chi, is that, as Dan always said, and other Tai Chi practitioners have said as well, when you get people doing pushing hands, oh, that's, really that's a nonsense, because as soon as you disengage, yeah, you've lost it. You're going to punch me. Yeah, bump. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea of pushing hands, same sort of thing, where you're trying to get the balance of that mm. thing you've got. Yeah. A punch to, to come off. But there's just not that many. Statistically, there are not that many Wing Chun practitioners. Now, even fewer good people. I think Wing Chun's one of the most popular Kung Fu's around the planet. <clears throat> Think Honestly, there's a lot of people at practice. Do you want to, You want me to slag off Wing Chun? <laughs> uh, um, there's, um, I know a couple of people who train very traditional Wing Chun. Yeah. Which is all the, the kind of like the knees in and the and the bong sao and the punching like yeah. this. And to be honest, if you if you open a fight with them, they're very difficult to deal with because you throw in your first jab and they basically they will if if you if you come in across that way, yeah, yeah. boom. Yeah. No, if you come in like with a straight, with a straight, with a straight right, right, they'll yeah, yeah. they'll come in like that and then bang, yeah. and then so, they've got three so steps. They've got three steps. If you can get past those, those that that bang, bang, three oh, steps, they run the out of they, they run out of tricks. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, as you said, they they snap punch. Arm control doesn't work if yeah. people are exactly which coming is back out. here. But the idea there is, if you throw that punch, you know, yeah, and I come in behind you. Yeah. So then it, it it throws out the mechanics because I'm following you. It, 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 it involves me basically walking you well, down. You've got yeah, you, you've got to make it work. But again, I have this criticism. It's not just Wing Chun. It's Kung Fu in general. It's Karate. It's Tai Chi, especially even in the, the the form of Tai Chi I did. Is that people practice and people go. Yeah, and, and they, they leave your the hand there, and you get to go. And you get to go, 
and you do all this stuff, but no one, even a traditional martial artist, no one is leaving their hand out there for that to happen. Because um, chain punching is coming back and you're moving on to the next. What people will do throw. is, um, and this is just like body mechanics, if you, if you, if you do throw out a punch and you're, say you're trying to swing through rather than just a jab. So, yeah, so, like, yeah, boom. But yeah, still... it's, yeah, but you, you, uh, the, the point is that you did actually stiffen up. When I hit you, you st it's a full response. You, you can't do anything about that. That arm will go stiff. And if you don't step, if you decided you're not going to step, well, then, boom. Yeah, no, if you don't step, if you, but for the no sake one... of the argument, Oh, all right, sake of the so, for the sake the of the argument, doesn't know how to fight. Yeah, so, yeah, so they just boom, stand right. there. Oh no, I fell over the whip. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> boom. Always so that, that arm, check yeah, <laughs> that arm, that arm has gone stiff because it's got a flinch response. Yeah, but uh, I mean, that's me not moving. And even if I wasn't going to move because I fell into the trap myself, even if I'm not going to move, we're still like somewhere different. You're not getting that stiff arm. Hold it there while I just poke. and. From there, yeah, you're going to come in with that, but I'm already swinging in with that. No, but you know, it, then we're sparring again. This, yeah. this is mm. my point, is that in fear, we're going to go, well, I'll do this, I'll do that. Yeah. It all falls apart when it gets into it. And then we're back to my main point, which is the gloves don't matter. I, am, I think they do. If I, if, I, if I get here and I hit you here, from here, I'm not going to do it, but yeah. if I did, if I hit you from there... Well, but it's, then, it's, you've got um, to get there. Well, thing is, I can do that from here. I don't have to pull but, it back. But I'm not. The, the, the thing is, I mean, and again, boxers don't have to. So you're stiffening your arm up there. I'm stiffening no. my arm up there. We're not getting into that now. Mm. So you're not getting that punch because this is the reality of what happens in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the next step comes. He's kind of like, you know, like how do I get out of this? And yeah, how do yeah, I, yeah. And how do I get to punch but, you in the head? But, but, but when you just say it's not boxing, it's not boxing. No, no, but it's not boxing. But you've still got to get your fist to where it's got to be to hit. And so it's, it's, it's easy to say, well, I can punch from here, but you've got to get there. And for me, there's no difference between getting there or being here and hitting. It's, it's, a, la it's a lack of space. Well, no, but from here I can punch. That's what I'm saying. So, it, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. We don't stand here like this. We've got to enter range yeah. to get it. So yeah. there's no difference between me entering range and yeah. throwing a punch than yeah. there is between me entering range, getting, cl getting close to you, mm. and then punching. In fact, what we've just shown there, as I've tried to get, he, he's been able to react better than when I stepped in and did that. Mm. So it's the way I see things, this whole I can punch from contact, it's... I see MMA fighters all the time when they're clinching. They do throw these little punches and they do get those knockarounds. And as we saw with Nate Diaz when he fought against uh, that YouTuber, um, when he had the big gloves on, so this is where I do take one of your points, he was doing these little rabbit punches. They weren't doing anything to no. Jake Paul. Yeah. They weren't doing anything to Jake Paul because they don't have the same impact. So I'll take that as a, as a point. Mm. But I still don't <laughs> think it's. it's well, no, but you're doing it, but I'm not doing anything. Yeah, I know. It, it, no, I'm, the, the point I'm making is the shortest point between um, distance to, is, is A to B. Boom. Yeah. It's like that. So from here, boom to here. It's not from here. It's not from here. It's not from here. It's not from here. It's from here. Yeah. We, but um, as we all see, though, as MMA develops and, and comes, we don't get this style of punching and. We might one day get there. Uh, someone might start to introduce it. But I maintain that what MMA has done is shown the weaknesses of various styles that they had in theory, that when you put it into practice, it doesn't have that same MMA effect. should have Southern Mantis. It just makes so much sense. But I think MMA is, is an arms race, and I think, like, things develop over time and the fact that these things haven't developed doesn't mean they won't come into it but I don't think I think it, it shows that a lot of this theory based stuff doesn't work the way what do you mean theory based? have you seen jujitsu people <laughs> the theory is going like you're here and then you're here and then but this that's goes here and test it. yeah yeah and that's my point if it's not live it doesn't well, well I agree it has and to be tested Wing Chun for 
ever has been people in rooms doing cheese sour, doing the odd thing. You get one or two people that actually fight for real. And when they fight for real, it's not like the theory. The, the, the only guy I know that fights Wing Chun is um, in, in MMA, in kickboxing, is Chilala. And um, he's on Fight Breakdown, Fight Commentary Breakdown. Yeah, um, and um, the guy loves him. And he says um, that he can only do 60% Wing Chun because it has to be adapted to being a gloved ring sport. Well, he can't, he can't come there. in. You can't come in and like start jabbing people in the eyes or kind of like punching people again, in the throat with, with that kind or of kicking argument, them in the nuts. Yeah, or, with that kind of argument, if I'm an MMA fighter, yeah. I'm going to John Jones the fuck out of you. Uh, yeah, but have you seen... Which is... The... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but they, have, you <laughs> see, have you seen them? They will stop a fight. UFC featherweight division, number eight, Jeremy Stevens in the black. Jair Rodriguez, number seven in the green. Straight away, you see the speed. Somebody gets a thumb in their eye, they no, will look, stop the fight. Have you seen the amount of fights where people get thumbed in the eye, the ref misses it? What you know about rolling down in the deep when your brain goes numb? You can call that mental freeze when these people talk too much. Put that sh and it carries on. Working off of that jab early. Oh! Yes, but it's, all the time. But, they stop um, it just because, like, getting hit in the nuts. But there's videos out there where people will say, hit me in the nuts during sparring, and we'll carry on. And they get hit in the nuts, and it fucking hurts, but they carry on. And they're wearing cups. No, they're not. They not are in MA. No, I'm not talking about MMA. I'm talking mm. about self-defense. <laughs> That's me. I asked my friends to kick me in the nuts as hard as they could. I did this to see how effective groin strikes are when someone is actually trying to punch you in the head people that experiment with these things because people always mm. say kick you in the nuts it'll end the fight because because in MMA that's the argument they use if they get hit in the nuts they stop the fight because yeah, it's against the rules but in a real fight it would carry on same with the eye pokes you get poked in the eye oh yeah that hurts I can't really see as well but I am going to carry on and I am going to get my vision back well I mean I think so what... my point is you can fight against somebody in a ring because it's the same rule set if we're out of the cage, there's nothing to stop an MMA fighter from breaking the same rules that you're talking about breaking. Only they are much better at distance, at striking power, at endurance, at cardio, and everything else. Well, this is I had a, a discussion with whatever his name is in the Facebook group, Dragon, Dragoon, whatever. <laughs> Marlin, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that's fine when you're 25. All right, what do you do when you, I mean, I'm 60. What do you do when you're 60? I'm, if some 25-year-old with his hair on fire that comes out of an MM agent and, and wants to fight me, right, I'm in a rather precarious situation, right, and I've got to basically deal with him as quickly as I can without, but, without, but MMA, without playing his game. In MMA, we have seconds that last, we have fights that last for seconds. Fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Oh! The aim of an MMA fight is to stop the fight. Here we go! Green trunks for the southpaw, the notorious Conor McGregor. Black trunks for the champion, Jose Aldo Jr. Conor relaxed and smiling. Oh! Just slapped him! What happens, you, we all want to, even boxers, they want to end the fight as quickly as they can. But There's lots of first round KOs. <clears throat> what happens when that isn't a thing. That, so you want to finish it. It is also a spectator sport. It is also two guys who are matched for weight and experience. Everybody's seeded. Champions fight champions. It's like black belts don't fight white belts in, in MMA. Black belts fight black belts and white belts fight, fight oh, yeah. white belts. I mean, I'm, I'm, so John what Jones do I do? Would finish me within about yeah, two So what the, the, the question is, you've got to ask yourself, is what do I do if a hundred kilo, six foot four, black belt decides to have a go at me. Uh, I um, and then, and so I don't want to fight. 
Yeah, and say I don't have the choice. And there, there you end up with a situation where you might have to do something. But you're saying, but this is my point, is he can break the same rules you can. So you're going to go for his eyes, but he's got you in mount. He's putting his yeah, thumbs yeah. through the back of your skull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I've, I've got, in that situation, I've got like a second. I've got a one second to, to get an advantage so I can get, basically get away alive. And that is the difference between kung fu and sports fighting. But again, my argument is you're not going to get that one second against an MMA fighter because he's not going to... How many M- statistics? How many MMA fighters? How many top flight UFC fighters are there in the UK? But it doesn't even uh, matter. Uh, uh, how many? How many? No, how many? Look, right, so I am... None. None. Yes, sir. Top flight? Yeah. What? <laughs> Televised? Yeah. <laughs> What, like as in the They're UFC? The world heavyweight champion of the UFC. They do not come much more highly touted than this man. Enter 13th ranked heavyweight Tom Aspinall. 100% finishing rate in his 10 professional wins. He is off to a perfect 3-0 start in the UFC. And Mike, a lot of people think we might be looking at a future UFC heavyweight champion. I'm telling you right now, we're looking at a potential champion 100%. He's the complete package. But he was teaching jiu-jitsu privates back then when he was just a kid. You know, so he's got very fast hands. Oh! So that's Tom Aspinall, who is the current interim heavyweight champion of the UFC. We've also got fighters like Leon Edwards, who up until recently was a world champion. And we've had fighters in the UFC from Britain since Dan Hardy and Michael Bisbee. Dan Hardy being the first British fighter to fight for a championship, and Michael Bisbee being the first British fighter to win a championship. I don't really accept this argument as a whole anyway, you know, Televised? Are we talking Cage Warriors? Are we talking UFC? Are we talking other organisations? Bellator? Plenty of British representation. And even if we discount televised fighters at all, the British MMA scene is a healthy one with professional fighters up and down the country. It's from Manchester, I believe. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Or Oldham or, you know, somewhere else. What's the there? chance of me getting mugged by him? But, but <laughs> we're back to this thing of... Somebody that does Kung Fu for 10 years comes up against, like we have it all the time. We get, uh, when I was in a fight gym, I keep acting like I'm still training, right? We, we get people come in who I've done six years Kung Fu, I've done eight years, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, get torn apart by MMA trainees who've been going for like six months. Because that- they train against real resistance and the Kung Fu people don't. Well, that's a question of, like, humility and kind of, like, knowing your own limits. If somebody, if some, you see it all the time, I'll fight you for your dojo, some wanker from nowhere goes into an MMA gym and says, I'm going to fight you, he's just a fucking idiot. Uh, it's, um, so I know, kind of, like, where I stand in the thing. So I know that, you know, if, that if an MMA fighter came at me, I am in deep, deep shit. I do not have magic skills, right? But I've got a certain amount of tools in my toolbox that give me a chance of, of coming out I with mean, my skin intact. Is, and, yeah, and, and now, yeah. at 60, and maybe in 10 years' time, when I'm 70, when, when this 25-year-old MMA champion is 70, he's not going to be doing kind of like flying head kicks, is he? Well, he's still going to have his jiu-jitsu and his short-range punches. Yeah, I know, yeah, his, yeah, uh, yeah. So he's going to have a certain number of skills. There's going to be some fighters who are going to be brain-dead and have no knees yeah. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's going to happen as well. But I have said, yeah, you know, um, what is, uh, I can't think of his name. He beat uh, GSP and then got beaten by GSP. I'll edit in his name in a bit. Matt the Terra Sarah. Right, um... He's in his 60s now. He Ken Shamrock's be. still fighting, I think. Uh, is he still fighting? I think so. Oh, that's tragic. But, um, <laughs> you see, but he was attacked in a restaurant. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. I'm going to break you. I'm going to fuck you up. It's okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Subdued yeah. the bloke, got him in mouth. You're like, all this. It's, it's statistics. Stati- it's all about statistics. Kind of like, how many? How, how many? One in a million, one in a million. 
Um, and the question is, is if I am jumped on my way home by some bloke who happens to be by himself and doesn't have a knife, right, and I'm by myself and have nothing to hand as a weapon, right? So it's all fantasy. We're all yeah. playing kind of like, you know, little dream games. Have I got something that will enable me to get away with my life? And yes, I do. Um, could but, I beat up this guy in a ring? No. But I still think, like, the outside of the ring, you're still playing on the same level. So if some guy's mugging you, he's not going to go, there's a ref stopping this. No, <laughs> no. And when we see King of the Streets, they can hit in the nuts. They can poke yeah. the eyes. They can do all this stuff. The stuff that works... 95% of the time, and this is the idea with Wing Chun as well. Most Wing Chun techniques aren't eye pokes, and most Wing Chun techniques aren't strikes to the, to the groin. Most Wing Chun techniques are punches, elbows. We well, don't actually do the chain punches. I mean, we have it, but we don't do it. Yeah, well, yeah. interestingly enough, though, the most recent cage fight that I've seen where a Wing Chun practitioner won, he used chain punching to win, the guy didn't have an answer to it. And the Wing Chun chain punch is just the same. I'm just coming, I'm doing this. And you don't get a space to breathe. Um, and unless that's what that's... Yeah. Which is, mm? I said, unless you step back and hook, which is what? It, well, the, I, the, the, the idea, yeah, yeah, you get it with your foot. But if you, if you k keep the person pressed onto their back foot... Um, yeah, you, you rely on that person. Yeah, yeah. Not knowing how to fight. There's, who's the guy? There's the American guy, Krav Maga guy on YouTube. And he's, um, somebody said, well, people have been criticising me for teaching people how to fight people who don't know how to fight. And he went, yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, you do that, um, but most people nowadays have had a little bit of training and or watch UFC. And you see people that don't even know what they're doing, guillotining people unconscious in the streets. Statistics, statistics. It's, it's like YouTube, you know, like how many takes, kind of like how many, how many millions of fights did not make it onto YouTube. Yeah, but, but it's um, it, it's it's all statistics. Yeah. You can it's cherry picking. I mean, well, we'll kind of go way off the topic, which was can punches <laughs> uh, work or short range punches work with gloves? I say they can. You say they can't. There's, We've there's, got the video. You can make up your own minds. Comment in the video. 